Okay, uh, we are about to start and we can start our last uh, speech. Uh, I would like to uh, do a self-introduction. I am the developer engineer of uh, UFAN technology and also I'm a contributor of uh, Jenkins. So I want to talk about the service list Jenkins on Kubernetes. And actually Jenkins has a relatively long history and this program just uh, was born from Hassan in 2004 and uh, according to the statistics of Jenkins official website around uh, 250,000 Jenkins services operating now and it has around 15 million of the users and over 1,000 Jenkins plugins. Jenkins has made great success in the certain areas, but also there are some challenges. First of all, Jenkins has a relatively long history at that time. The distributive, distributed system is not popular, so they may have the single point failures problems. So the uh, users need to update or install the plugins from time to time, so we need to restart it. And our CSV cannot operate normally, and also Jenkins is a Java-based program. Our CSV operation is usually run in the working time, because we need to, code it, uh, to change the source code. So we, it may just consume a large disk space and increase our cost. Also, Jenkins, at that time, of Jenkins, the physical resource is scarce and the users is unlike of us. If you want to start a CICD operation, we just create a pod for it independently. But at that time, Jenkins, if they want to um, possibly utilize a physical node, so it has an algorithm to uh, try their best to use the node can repeatedly and which may lead to the slow operation of uh, Jenkins and also other CSD, uh, other CSD operation might influence source and also Jenkins, the storage of Jenkins can be um, sequenced into the hard disk and might just uh, consume the disk space and we need to deal with it by ourselves. Also Jenkins has many other problems. So Jenkins X just come to the market during this background. It was born from the GEP, actually. It is a kind of a enhancement proposals of Jenkins, so which was originated from Jenkins, and currently the Jenkins X has already become a totally independent program. And the design concept of Jenkins X is to use the power of Kubernetes to construct and to build a modernized CSD platform. As for the modernization, I have two understanding of it. First is that the, it has a modern architecture, for example, to solve the problems of the great consumption of the disk space. And also, as for the improved enhancement of this experience, we need to provide automated a CSDD. For anyone who are, have done the CSD, we need to do a lot of work. For example, in KVX, we need to learn about the Docker, the Docker file, and to use the Docker build. And uh, Docker is not enough. Also, we need to write some of the YAML. And also, we need the Helm to package. So these series of works are really painful. And also, I need to manage the environment. As for Jenkins X, so the users can avoid using these learning these new things, and also Jenkins X can support the traditional uh, workload as well as the cloud native workload. So in the design, in the initial phase of the design of Jenkins, uh, it is different with the traditional Jenkins. We will think about how to. Um, create a pipeline and how can I run it and to satisfy the demand of the customers. But from the initial design of Jenkins X, they need to think about what people want and how can uh, we design it better to uh, cater to the perspective of the customers. So we want to have a faster time and to higher frequency of the deployment. So through the automated software delivery, so our build software 
and release of software can be more reliable. So Jenkins X, during the initial design, it has done many of the uh, research. This is a accelerator uh, book, has mentioned the high performance team, uh, some of the methods that they would use. So Jenkins X has learned these methods and uh, put them into the design of the products. For example, we need to versionalize all the artifacts and to automate it, deploy, and also to have the development based on the main bodies. If you're interested in it, you can have a look at these books and you can learn many new things about the DevOps. So we have the Jen this graph of Jenkins. This is uh, the original graph of uh, the design of Jenkins. First of all, this is from the perspective of application. And in the traditional Jenkins, you, we all know that we are defining a freestyle job. And then we have a, a line in Jenkins X, we are defining an application. And it has a, a line. So when you are creating the application, also it has to provide the function of environment management. We can see it from the left graph. On the above side, we have the a Git repositories. There are three repositories. One is the uh, application repository, and one is the the kind of um, the productive namespace, a Jenkins X. Also take the uh, environment management as one part of it, and all the applications in the environment are get ops through the rectification of the code and through the Jigs OPS to simultaneously put into our environment. And Jenkins, Jenkins X also can have the function of the re preview of the environment. So when we have, uh, uh, submit a pull request, it will just uh, produce a, a service address after the codification, and we can easily see the environment directly, which is more easy to be observed. And as for the working process of Jenkins S, we can briefly scan about, first of all, the developer will submit a pull request to our uh, code repository. And it will have a preview environment, and relevant staff can review on it. And after the review, we will just uh, put it into master. We only have one so branch that is based on the development of the main body, we can have a faster release of it. And when the PR is in the master and the, you can have a release version, this is only a small change and this release version will simultaneously put in the stadium and the Jenkins X will just uh, execute the uh, automated execution. And when the users need to go to the production, and we can put it into the production repository. And when this master is put into the master branch, it can be put into the production environment simultaneously. And Jenkins X, during its evolution process, also uh, they, uh, it has experienced many of the changes in technology. First of all, Jenkins X was born in GP and uh, it was using the static Jenkins server like most of us. And then we have mentioned that the static Jenkins server has some problems like the single point problem, the assumption of the big space, and then they have introduced a pro as a receiver of the webhook which is a high performance and a high available architecture. So a static Jenkins server might always lose some of the uh, information. So once we have Pro, we don't need to worry about these issues. And even though we have introduced a Pro, the webhook will not be immersive, will not be released. So we have another that is the one-shot Jenkins, actually like a Docker image. At that time, we use Kinetic View to run the Docker image and then to deliver into 
Jenkins and to finally destroy it. And then in this procedure, we find that we are still using the JVM, even though we are not running it for a long time. Still, we are using the JVM, and also our loading time might be quite slow, and there are some of the performance problems. And then we have introduced Tecton, which is a very pure cloud native and uh, Tecton. And in 2019, Jenkins X also has introduced its own standardized definition, used a YAML file. And uh, next, uh, I would like to introduce the technology behind the Jenkins X. First, I think the first problem we need to solve is the application package because Jenkins is from the perspective of application. So at that time, uh, Jenkins found a project called Draft, which is also a, a cloud native project. So actually, its concept is that to isolate the user's contact. contact. And when we choose a language, it will produce a Docker file automatically. And Jenkins X will utilize this kind of thought. And we have the build packs. And there will be more files produced in the build packs. And it will, uh, like the stock file, Helm chart, scaffold, YAML, and the series of the files. And they will automatically create repositories for them. Therefore, the users only need to. Uh, finish the CSD. Most of the users don't need to uh, just uh, change this configuration. If they have higher demand, they will just uh, have some changes of it. And once we have the lines, how to have some improvement in the architecture? So, serverless Jenkins was born in this background. It mainly have the following characters. First, uh, it just ran the lines based on the container. And also, serverless is run based on the events. So our webhook message. And also, it is a loosely uh, coupled architecture and a highly available architecture. And also for our webhook event, and for our uh, underlying pipeline engine, which is a Tecton actually, which was born in the Canada, published by Google, which is a serverless platform. And in serverless, one indispensable part is that we need to uh, build a serverless container. And the Knative have the Knative build program. But once they have this program, the user wants to do more things. For example, one, whether we can have the unit test and we can have the code quality test. So we have a Knative pipeline. And currently, this project is uh, split it up as a top project and mainly targeted the cloud native underlying pipeline engine. And Jenkins X is running on this Tecton. Tecton has many uh, good performances and characters, but most importantly, it can just uh, uh, eliminate the GVM. It has a faster running. And uh, it uses the CRD Plus controller. Its APR is a declarative. We can just uh, uh, use it very easily. We can just uh, work it very easily. And our CSD task will not. Uh, fail due to some of the reasons. And uh, after Tecton, we may have the Pro, this project. Actually, it was uh, born in on the basis of the K8S. It has many of the repositories. Every day, uh, it will have uh, tens of thousands of the CICP tasks running on the serverless platform. So many of the uh, messages can, came to KAS through Pro and through other module of the CSD to be consumed. And also Pro can just uh, support the chat ops. And we can have some comments to achieve, for example, or 
how do we allocate the task and how to uh, shut down these kind of tasks. So Pro is just such kind of high performance and high available event reactor. So once we have this, we need to combine them. So CRD is actually a CRD controller. It's kind of like glue between modules. And yesterday's conference speaker also mentioned that the CRD box controller has become kind of like a hero of our story. So it means that we can have this kind of like a loose coupling, and uh, this will make sure that we have a quick start and uh, we have very rich, uh, we have a lot of like the community resources and uh, if we have, we need to, if we want to develop a system ourselves, we need to work on high availability ourselves. So by using this kind of like combination of CRD controller is much more convenient. And uh, we also have this kind of like pro environment, and uh, we have a Git provider, and the Pro and uh, Kubernetes API server, and the JX controller. JX controller will create a watch and a job. And when we create an object and the Kubernetes API server, we will send the project create event to JX controller. And the JX controller will receive the data and create a Python line. In this way, you can see that in this way you can see that all the modules they are connected and uh, they are connected through a middleware. And the coupling is quite loose among all the components. So this is the Jenkins X, a more detailed structure. And actually we have a lot of components in this dev environment. And uh, most important is that we have the pipeline operator in the Jenkins X. And the Jenkins X, we have a lot of tech time. We have tech down pipeline and the tech down task. It's kind of like definition of our flow of a pipeline, and it will trigger pipeline run. And during pipeline run, we will also push temporary PR in the part to the part, send the parts to edge, and if the CID task is successful and we will actually deploy it to the environment. So in this diagram you can see that summarized structure is basically actually has been confirmed. The one issue is that as I mentioned earlier in Jinkax, we do have like hardware my the storage in, in the hard in the hard drive may run out, and we do have or we encounter some issues in terms of the part and the definition. They actually they're useless, and all those will be all those data will be actually stored in the warehouse or the Kubernetes API and the Jenkins House actually has defined. Uh, Using Kiva X core resources to clean the useless data. So we can actually use those to clean some of the useless data, the previous environment, and clean up the pod and clean up expired data. So JX and we have has provided this GC and uh, to actually and it, it will regularly clean those expired data and also that when we develop it develop the things on Kubernetes, uh, on Kubernetes they are actually indeed some problems in terms of the dev part well, we will automatically need to sync local code to pod and also it is difficult for us to 
So we have this new dev pode. So dev pod can be kind of like a development environment for us. The so dev pod actually has two main functions. It will automatically sync local code to remote pod. And uh, if you write the code in IDE, and you just use command S, and it will automatically sync to the remote pod. So you don't need to manually upload the data. and. Uh, for the deployment, it's quite quick. And also, the another thing is that the S code you, I think you're all familiar with it. So it's kind of like web based. So you can deploy directly on the web page. And Jink STV pod, it actually has integrated these functions, so you can directly edit your code on the website. And this is a demos, a demo video. So you can see that if you enter the DB pod and it will return an address, you can open it. So we can see this familiar VS code page and then edit the code. <laughs> And open the terminal. Enter the command to start the server. So we don't need to go through the complex procedure that we used to have. So we can directly visit it on using the web browser. So this one is actually a the Jinkflex structure. So it actually includes a lot of modules. So for Jinkflex, it actually has far more functions than what is shown here. And Jinkflex actually has utilized the advantages of cloud manufacturers or providers. So for instance, when we cleanse the pod, if we want, what if we want to save all the data? Jinkex actually has this kind of function. They will automatically sync those data to the cloud providers. And for instance, object storage or other storage. So in that way, on the, we will have these kind of like uh, So now let's have a look at the demo. So we have a pre-installed Jinkx environment, and it's installed and it's and saved in QKE. So what, uh, I'll just uh, please allow me to enter my catalog to have a look. So we can create, yes, create, and uh, we and quickly start. Enter. The name of the warehouse. And the click confirm. And now it will ask me to select the type of language. So, for instance, if it's Android or .NET, so let's go for Golam. And it will show initial lies the warehouse and uh, enter the information and uh, they will then it will start this warehouse establishment local, uh, locally
So now it's completed, the procedure is completed. And uh, you could actually use this command to see the pipeline build. So it's actually quick. So and it has run some of the steps in here. And uh, let me open the GetUp page. So here is the Hello Kubercom page that we just created and it will automatically be sent to GitHub. And uh, you, uh, we can change some of the code here. Well, I'll just, uh, because the time is limited, I'll just do a pre request. change some of the codes here. Okay, now we send it to the code warehouse and a new for request. We can click create here. So there's a web hook message has been sent and has been responded and the user and so it's waiting to be stopped. So actually I'm using, I, I used to my account to kind of like create this kind of robot. So the robot has sent the messages back to me. So for instance, if I can assign the task to myself. And then the robot will help me to do all the things and then I can do something just random. So you can see that I'm just, just doing some random stuff and the preview will give me an address. And then we can open the address and uh, the changes that we've just made. And also the environment that we can get the application here and we can see the, the project that we just created and also the URL.
So that's the end of our demo. So in the end, and this is the QKE Kubernetes QR code. We are in an open source container platform, and there's a Jenkins China WeChat official account. I'm also a member of Jenkins China. If you are interested in joining our community, you can scan a QR code and join us. For further discussion, do you have any question? Well, I want to ask, where do you run the servers? Well, actually, just now when we are running the pipeline, we don't have a static server. So when I open my terminal, I can see some of the parts that I've run and this part are in are completed and they are destroyed. In this process we don't have a static server. We have one pro as a static server and pro create a pro job and the CSCD don't have a static running and every time it creates a new pod and use text on. And just now, I think it is due based on the GitHub. If we do it, you can also have a similar uh, result on other systems. Um, so for our community, we are doing some of develops based on these function. Maybe currently GitHub is, has the best performance and we can get lab. And, uh, the uh, official website has a roadmap and uh, it supports the reports from uh, different uh, Git uh, providers. I want to ask, as for Jenkins, it also has another function is that it has many plugins. And as for Jenkins X, as for the serverless, and this cognitive, uh, well, these plugins also be used. As for Jenkins X2 version, one is called the next version of the CICD and another is called traditional Jenkins well, and it will run some of the Jenkins server you can use the plugins and you can gradually put it into the next generation of the CICD platform and since our friend has mentioned whether it can cover the GitLab, it don't have a very full coverage, so many users will not use it directly. You can experience first of all. So actually, these plugins are not supported on this. Yes, maybe these plugins will not be used later on. So, uh, well, let's write the plugins by itself, these kind of files. It has other ten extension mechanism that is different from previously. You have add on the Prometheus is due and uh, if I do some of the blue and green deployment that it is so different with the traditional Jenkins. Well, as for the demo, you have said that we don't need to codify. Actually, this codify process is we have automatically produced many files, and among these files, they have included these things that we need to codify. For example, in our Docker file, but for some of the users, especially the developers, they don't want to learn these 
I would like to clarify on how much are the definition of it. And if we have good text, if we can define good text for ourselves, and the developers don't need to uh, write the stuff like that anymore. Still, they need to have a person of the stuff like that. But our current development is more inclined to the features that the product is providing. Because of the microservice, it can be really simple. And if you need to change some code in it, you don't need to change a lot of things. Yes. But ultimately, for the users, uh, we need to all do it from the perspective of the application. Current users do need to care about the uh, Docker file on the helm chart is because they create it as you know, quite relatively new and uh, it doesn't have enough uh, top layer architecture. So we won't choose, we don't need to write for the chart L. The cloud native application also be like this, our developers. They don't need to care about what we need to change, we can just change it directly. Thank you.